Good afternoon. This is uh, July 10th, uh, and we are in a very sunny summer afternoon in Nova Scotia. This is Vaughan Smith, westcoatbellpottery.ca, if you look at the website. Uh, and um, I've been throwing out here for an hour or two this morning. I've made a bunch of drinking glasses and tea bowls. Um, but it's so pretty this afternoon, I just thought I would do another video on tea bowls since I've done it before. But it's really nice, it's beautiful. So I'll show you what it looks like. I've got the water over there. It's about uh, 26 degrees. There you go. You can probably see it from there. But um, just a, a gorgeous afternoon. And basically, uh, I'm enjoying sitting outside throwing some pottery. But um, let's plug the mic in so you can hear me a little better. Oh, and I've got a really good angle, very close to the wheel. I've been playing around with this, as you've seen from the videos, but um, I think this is a really good angle. You'll be able to get right down, and I'm going to be able to splash the camera or the, or the iPad. That may be the disadvantage. How about that? Maybe it'll be too close, and you'll be able to see the top of the piece disappear above the screen. But anyway, let's give it a go, and I'll watch it before I post it. But, um, yeah, well, hopefully everybody is uh, enjoying a healthy July, and um, wherever you're watching from, I hope that uh, you're all safe. These are only tiny one-third piece, one-third of a pound, and some of them will be a quarter of a pound pieces of clay, and it's actually a number 80 from Laguna Clay Company, if you're interested about the clay. All right, so let's get some little glasses thrown. This is also a Shimpo light. Um, I have several of these wheels. Um, and I also have a Shimpo whisper, which is what I throw on inside. You can hear the humming of this one, I'm sure. But um, let's see if I can get that mic a little bit. It might be scratching on the, on the cable there. But um, yeah, Shimpo light is a nice wheel. I can lift it up and put it outside. I don't leave it out at night because it might rain. Um, I've got a slight covering here, so I'm shaded from the sun. Um, but I put the wheel in and out when I need it outside. So one third of a pound of clay here. It may be over a third. I don't weigh my clay, remember. I just cut the balls of clay up from the block. Somebody mentioned that I'm throwing very fast in a video, um, speed-wise with the wheel rotation, and you judge that based on if the piece wobbles or gets too wide for what you want, then you would slow the wheel down. And your skill level will determine that. I consider myself kind of at the peak of my career as far as throwing ability, because I'm 65 and I still have a lot of strength in my muscles and I also have that experience of throwing for 40 years and I throw a lot of different clay bodies I don't stick to just one clay I just like to experiment so this is going about half speed clay uh, speed wise on the wheel I'm going to slow it down now because I just nicked underneath there a little bit so it's got less holding it to the wheel head. Then I'm putting a little foot on it using this little tool. And this tool is not that fancy. It's basically one I bought probably 35 years ago, but it's been worn out a lot. Uh, do I have one? Here you go. Here's a new one. That's a new one. All right. And this is the old one. It's been worn away a lot. So, uh, but I love this tool, it's perfect for what I need now. Alright, so let's use the rib. I'm going to wet my hand again. Now I'm just kind of controlling the speed a little slower. And the rib is pulling away the water off the outside edge. Stop. I like my rims to have a little thickness to them. So basically... I never go right above the rim. Yeah, I'm 
just going to knock that in. Touch the touch down there. And this is not too tall, so I don't need to have a sponge on a stick. Which is really useful if you're making narrow, tall items. I can still get my fingers in there right to the bottom to get the water out. And then just wipe the water off the rim. This clay is also a very smooth clay. Although it does have what I think is AP green fire clay in, inside. There's some really pale speckles. But you can't feel them when you're throwing. It's not like it's a gritty clay. There you go. Alright, so push that to the end. Well, let's put that on there for a minute. Often when you put them from one bat to another they'll stick so wet the area where it's going to go on to. Alright, that's one. Now I'm going to look for a slightly smaller piece of clay because that got fairly tall. Keep your clay wrapped in plastic while you're throwing, if you've got multiple pieces. Because the edges, the little corners, if you're not banging into balls, will dry out and you'll have a hard time centering it. It's better to bang your clay into balls, but because I'm a production potter, I do this to make a living, I have to throw fairly fast and keep as you know, many pieces per hour as I can possible. But it's actually very nice this year. In some ways, we've got this COVID-19 thing going around, so everything's sort of slowed down a bit, you know, notch or two. So in some ways, it's less stressful because of the we don't get as many tourism, you know, people coming around at the moment. All right, so this is a quarter pound of clay, remember. So always leave about half a centimeter to a centimeter of clay at the bottom. I will take my finger and I move it from the outer edge to the center to compress the clay too. Yeah, it's a very small ball of clay. So we've had some uh, people already in the gallery this morning, but this is lunchtime now, so I figure it'll be quiet for an hour or two. And we have a storm coming in tomorrow, tomorrow night. Well, we'll be on the outer edges of it, but it's going into Long Island near Manhattan tomorrow, and we're just to the east of that, so maybe we won't see much of it at all, but they are forecasting about an inch or so of rain. That's about two and a half centimeters of rain. Which is nice because I do, I have a garden, so I'll film the garden one day. And so I like it when it rains because I don't have to water the garden as much. So there's that foot again. Wet it a bit, caught it with my fingernail then. See, even the best of us can actually do that. Okay, now here's the thing that I like to do. I stick my ribbon at the bottom, put my fingers on the inside, and even though it's quite thin, I can make like a an angled underbelly. And then start coming up. Now, as long as my fingers on the inside are not dragging on the clay, I can do that again. It wasn't wobbling too much. It's very thin. This is only a quarter pound of clay, remember? So I'm pushing down my fingers on the inside of the pot against the rib, and that gives me that angle there, and then I change the rib shape of the angle of it to come up the side wall. on that 
I don't want to go over the top of the rim because I like to keep a thick rim. So I've got a, a, like a two angles there basically. And then you can define that even more just by digging your corner of the rib in a little bit there. And I already have it kind of defined at the top there, just there. And now I'm going to get the water out and I'm going to dent it a couple of times. Get the water out. Oh, I'm just filming a video. There we go. There we go. So basically, stop it now. And if you're very careful, without being too frightened of doing this, just push down. It's very thin, remember. And you can change the shape of this. So you make it rotate a little bit so it's kind of just altered a little bit and then if it dents the top a little bit you can just kind of put your fingers either side of that as long as they're a little slippery you can make it round again there we go I'm cutting it off Put a little water, remember, right on your bat so it will slide easily. There you go. And I'll move that aside again. There you go. I'll do one more because it's only about 12 minutes so far. Let's see. I'll go one a little bit in between size here. The clay is warm because the sun's shining, was shining on it. All right. So center, press hard, top, and also with the side hand. And then, if it feels like it's fighting back a little bit by not wanting to go centered, you can cone it. Press your hands together and then make it go back down again. Now it feels better. That's somehow that always tends to push it back into center a bit easier if you cone it up and go down again. If the clay is pretty soft, it's pretty, you, know, you don't have to, it'll just go into center so easily. All right, so push down with your fingers in the center. Pull it. fingers apart towards your palm again so I'm pushing that way now put your fingers from the outer edge to the center so basically I opened it this way so I'm going from the other opposite side to the center to kind of push you put pressure on in the opposite direction to kind of open it up and raise the wall it's still going almost full speed. Because it's so narrow, the speed isn't making it fly out. Now I just slowed it down a bit. I always compress the rim because like I said I like thicker rims so bring your finger down and just push that down slowing the wheel down a bit more gonna push the foot in a little narrower bring your fingers up now I'm gonna put pressure with the inside fingers and resist with the outside fingers so it gets wider if you put pressure with both sets of fingers it would get taller now I don't want to get a hand glass, so I don't want to get too wide because it's always hard to lift something up if it's getting too wide when your hand wrap around it. And then I'm going to use the rib to put the foot in. 
my fingernail is just above the real rib there so it gives an extra it almost makes the foot on its own without having to use the rib again but then what I do with this little tool this is why because it's worn out I like it I can put it in there to rest on the foot and then just come up and raise the height of that foot quite a bit and then using the metal rib because it supports the clay as you're putting pressure on and I've slowed the wheel down again I do that underbelly it's like a little wall that goes flaring out and then I change the angle of the rib and I come up to the rim, trying not to go over the top of the rim. Cho it's a personal choice on rims, but I like to feel the rim if I'm drinking out of a glass. So it's not too thin. I, mean, I don't know whether it's just a, my, growing up my mother had China and China is very thin. And we broke a lot of China cups when we were kids washing them up. Gosh, I hope my mother doesn't hate me for that. We lost a lot of nice China cups. My mother is 92 in England in a town called, Sh just outside of Sheffield called Peniston. And Unfortunately, it's it's sad, but my art teacher when I was at school just died and um, She was a great art teacher and she changed my entire life by getting me to do clay I was aimed for, aiming for a steel factory or a coal mine when I was a kid So a teacher changed my life just by encouraging me to do something that I was a, probably a little bit good at but not not great at that age But that lady's name was Anne McPake, and I will always appreciate what she taught me. I get emails from some of my students too, so um, I hope they enjoyed what we were doing at school. If they're still emailing me, I assume they are. Mostly through Facebook. Okay, so we've got that nice defined space there with an undercut that's hanging out a long way. I'm just going to hit it with the rib again just to kind of push it back up because that's hanging out a lot and here's another little thing you can do if you get it this wheels not as good as this the Shimpo uh, whispers much better controlling the speed but that's not bad either there so don't be afraid to do this I see how it's out out of sh round now so you can just come back in with your tool and push it back into a round So you've got this nice thing to hold on to with, you know, sort of curves in, concave and convex. And um, if you want to, you could even just hit the bottom of it. I don't think it needs it. It's, it's still pretty round down there. But um, so when we glaze it, these little, it's almost like a leaf shape, the way it does that. And that's just using the corner of this rib. It's got a sharp edge just there with a curve and a straight edge. All right, so let's get this one off the wheel. And how many minutes is that? Oh, we're almost at 20 minutes. So let's wipe my hand off, lift you up a little bit. I like to keep the videos shorter because I do know that I get students watching at school. Um, and so your class time is important if you're uh, learning how to do pottery you don't want to watch videos you should be making pottery but uh, watching videos I have fun myself and this is at my age uh, watching them at night I like watching potters work um, so I subscribe to some other potters channels as well um, but uh, this is a great life being a potter so I really appreciate that teacher Anne McPake teaching me how to make pottery when I was 16, 17 years old um, and that was in Peniston in South Yorkshire in England. I remember it fondly. I um, hope you're all staying healthy and well. So uh, enjoy the uh, video and let me know if you do. All right.
thank you very much. I'm signing off at Vaughan Smith in Nova Scotia.